anchors up, sails at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing today? Um, I, I got nothing. I, this is the part where I try to say something goofy and then, and then like sort of like lead into some small talk or some shenanigans or um, something. But I, I just I had nothing right there. My I went I went into my bag <laughs> and it was empty. You ever go to the gym and you think that you and you think that you packed away clothes. You think you brought clothes to the gym and then it turns out you didn't. Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's what just happened in my head just now. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, it is our Sloop Picks episode here. We have six games. We will six games. We will cover. Uh, but Kyle, isn't episode. it seven? It is seven. But you can listen to the Ohio State <laughs> Iowa uh, game from our Know Your Enemy episode on Thursday. So you want to hear our thoughts and opinions and uh, and shenanigans from there? Listen to Thursday's episode, but we will cover these six games and these six games, Jared, four of them are top 25 matchups here. So let's let's start from the top here. Uh, we got a pair of undefeated teams. Yes, Syracuse is undefeated, Jared. Syracuse taking on Clemson. It's going to be too much orange, too much orange in this game here, Jared. <laughs> and and, and uh, Cuse is blue and, and, and Cuse is blue looks kind of purplish too yeah. depending clemson upon the uniforms a, they're wearing, wearing clemson is a 13 and a half point favorite in this game they are yeah um both teams undefeated both teams top 25 mm -hmm. as kyle points out um if we take a look at who is the superior orange like are we talking like mm -hmm. color speaking or just like this is what they're going for in the game like who or who has the superior shade of orange? Because I do prefer Clemson's orange. Um, web error. Okay, there we go. Um, similar points per game, although Syracuse is letting up less points per game. But if we look at the schedules, I, I think it's fair. I think it's pretty fair to point out that. Clemson's schedule's maybe been a bit tougher. Um, Syracuse's last five opponents are NC State, Wagner, Virginia, Purdue, UConn. Uh, Clemson's last five are Florida State, Boston College. Not that Boston College is, is fantastic, but if you compare that to, say, Wagner, much tougher. Um, NC State, uh, Wake Forest, and Louisiana Tech. None of those teams are as bad as Wagner or Yukon. None of those teams are as bad as Wagner or Yukon. Um, so we, we take a look at the schedules. We compare them. We do see that NC State's a common opponent. Um, but we have to kind of throw that out because NC State had Leary against Clemson. They didn't have Leary against Syracuse, which is obviously a huge deal. So we kind of have to throw that out. So uh, at the end, um, I think I'm going to take Clemson only because I just haven't seen Syracuse play anybody. And yes, NC State, but but Leary. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go with uh, Clemson as well here. We've seen the past couple of games. Clemson just kind of turns it on in the second half here, but it it's because they um I think I think some of the teams they played have a little bit better defenses here and they kind of figure it out in the second half. I don't trust Syracuse's defense to slow them down at all in the first half. And it's just going to be, I think Clemson's going to run away with this. So I'll, yeah. I'll take Clemson to cover in this game. And this is still like a flawed Clemson team overall. I think this yeah. is not one of they're better than last year's Clemson team, but they're not as good as like Clemson when Clemson was Clemson a few yeah they, back. They, they they've they've fixed some of their offensive line issues that they had last year but it, they are prone they're still prone to that this year but it, it's not as obvious as it was last year but I prefer yeah but again this Clemson team is much better than they were last year and I think they're much better in October than they were in September um but 
yeah, I think this is this is a very good Clemson team. It's just not like world beater Clemson that we got used to there for a few years. But yeah, they mm-hmm. win this game, and I think they cover the fourteen. Yep. All right. Um, our guest picker. Who do we got for our guest picker this week, Jared? Dinger. I just named this fun to say. Um, he uh he was unfortunately busy. So he didn't give us like a lot to, I mean, he didn't like write out paragraphs or anything, but he did send us our picks and he says he's going to take Syracuse with the points. All right. Uh, Next game here, Jared. Oops. Let me go back here. Apologies. Next game here, Jared, we have Ole Miss and LSU. Ole Miss coming in seven and zero, and LSU five and two, playing in Baton Rouge. Pretty much a pick'em game. It's a Not pick'em. Pretty much. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is a pick'em game here. So, I'm I'm a little surprised to see that this was essentially a pick'em game here, and it, I, yeah, I got Ole Miss. I, I don't know much more about that. <laughs> LSU, I just. <laughs> I just don't really trust LSU here. Yeah, they've they've looked good at times, and they had their big win uh, against Florida here. But I, Ole Miss is just a more um, all all around better team, so I'll, I'll pick all, Ole Miss in this game. Yeah, I mean, you do have to wonder. Um, LSU lost to Florida State, and it turns out Florida State isn't even all that good. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, Austin, if this game was at night, I would consider LSU. Yeah, I, just, I don't necessarily think that the I don't I don't. Yeah. Anyway, that, that that's I'm moving past that before I totally get lost in the sauce. Um, other than that, like LSU has a win over Mississippi State and maybe Mississippi State was better than we we're expecting them to be this year. But they're not they're not great. They barely beat a bad Auburn team. They got their face kicked in by Tennessee. And they beat Florida, yep. who has been wildly inconsistent this year. Um, I just I'm not seeing anything I'm super impressed with. But if we look at Ole Miss, if we look at Ole Miss, um they haven't really beat anyone either. And unless you think depends on how how you feel about Kentucky. Uh they were number seven. Uh, Kentucky was number seven when they yeah. beat Kentucky. Um but they we all know they weren't really a top 10 team. Uh Ole Miss has a great offense and a good quarterback, and we all know the rule. Yeah. U- ultimately, yeah. I-, I think I've just seen LSU look terrible at times this year. And I think I've it, seen Ole Miss in games where they should have been better, but ultimately has won with relative comfort. Again, with Kentucky being the exception all year. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Ole Miss. Yeah, I think Ole Miss, Ole Miss has success running uh, r- with their running attack here, and LSU has been prone with their uh, rushing defense too. So uh, definitely, I think uh, another favor for Ole Miss there. Uh, Dinger here, uh, very short and sweet here. Uh, the LSU line is weird. <laughs> give me, give me them with a point five point. Mm, so he has LSU there. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, next game here. Uh, we talked about a team orange versus orange. Well, Jared, we got another team orange versus orange here. Texas and Oklahoma State. What uh, is is this going to be a continuing trend, Jared? A lot of a lot of, a lot of orange in the slip picks this week. A lot of orange in the slip. A lot picks of oranges. By the way, Are very gonna... strange to me that there isn't a, a team that's like orange and silver or orange and gray i know tennessee I, tennessee among some other teams will sometimes put on grays as alternatives but there's no teams mm-hmm. in all of fbs that has the color combo of orange and gray and i think that's a huge miss yeah yeah i got gotcha. you oklahoma right, so state texas- wears orange and gray on occasion yeah and like i said so does so does tennessee um but it's not like, you know, their colors. Yep. So Texas ranked 20th, Oklahoma State 11th here. 
uh, games in Oklahoma State and the Longhorns. I had to make sure I was looking at the uh, the pixels here correct, Jared. Uh, the Longhorns are a six and a half point favorite. What do you got, Jared? Uh, I tell you what, I'm having a hard time with Oklahoma State. I feel like I know who Texas is at this point. Um, I, I feel like I know Texas, especially with Ewers, should be better. Uh, I did have that idea rattled a bit last week when they barely beat Iowa State. Um, but at the same time, you know, with Ewers, they completely slaughtered Oklahoma. So it's it's hard to sort of figure out who's the real Texas, I guess. Maybe they're a team that shows up for big games, but doesn't show up for not big games. Um, and as far as Oklahoma State goes, they're just off of a two to two overtime loss to LSU. Um, outside of that, they've had some TCU. What I say? LSU. TCU. 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 Um, you know, they had a, a win over a decent Texas Tech team, a win over a decent Baylor team, uh, a pretty decisive win over Arizona State. So I'm going to take Oklahoma mm -hmm. State here. I just think I like their results to this point more. All right. All right. I, I have Oklahoma State to cover this game here. I, I, it's just a gut feeling here. I, I just, I really like what I see from, from, Oklahoma State, yes, they they did have that um, loss to TCU the previous week, but I just I like them overall. But I mean, it's hard to not go with Texas here because of what you've seen Ewers do recently. It really pu putting up um, a lot of points since he's been since he's been playing here. So yeah, I, I definitely can see why people would pick Texas to cover here. But six and a half, I yeah. I don't know. I think I think Oklahoma State will keep this close. I, I really do. So I'll take the Cowboys. Oh yeah. I mean, and by the way, I think I do think Texas wins in the end. I just don't feel so good about it that I'm willing to give them six and a half points. Yeah. All right. And Dinger just says Oklahoma State with the points. When in doubt, pick a cowboy. That's not one of the rules. <laughs> It sounds, right. like are... <laughs> it, it, sounds, it sounds like a country song. It sounds it sounds like a country song. All right, we're moving out west now, Jared. We got future Big Ten member UCLA undefeated, taking on Oregon. Three thirty kickoff here, and just making sure here. Yeah, Oregon here is a six and a half point favorite. Who do you got, Jared? Uh, you know, I, I look at these two teams and I wonder to myself, why is with 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 Oregon, right? It's hard to forget that the last time they played. And I guess it depends on how you feel like BYU when I say this, but the last time they played like a very good team. It, they got run off the field by Georgia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely run off the field by Georgia. They did turn around and have a really decisive win against BYU, who was ranked 12th at the time. But does 12th time mean anything when it's September 17th? Um, then they beat Washington State barely. They beat Stanford decisively, but Stanford's not great. Don't tell Notre Dame. I said that. Um, <laughs> uh, and then a decisive win against Arizona. I feel like it's been a long held tradition with Oregon that they are really good at dominating bad teams, but just don't show up when it counts. So the question I think mm -hmm. we then have to turn around and ask ourselves, okay, how good is UCLA? Yeah, they have, their past two games, I mean, Utah and Washington. Now you can have that same argument, is is Washington any good or not? But they, I mean, they won. I mean, it was close. They they beat Washington by eight points, and they beat Utah, um, which is a really good team. 
to beat Utah by 10 points. So I, th- just, I think I think I think resume wise, based on their performance, I, I like I like what I've seen from UCLA so far. Yeah. Um and, and while I I don't know that I don't know that they're gonna win the game, UCLA. Um I, I don't know that they're gonna win the football game, but I'm I'm also I'm not gonna I'm not going to pass up six and a half points to take them. If this was yeah, two and exactly. a half, I might go Oregon. At six and a half, yep. I take UCLA. Yep. Give me the Bruins here. Dinger here says. Why can't. He agrees. He, sa- he agrees. UCLA with the points. Matt says, why can't the extended college football playoff start this year? So many potential amazing matchups. I. I disagree. I, I think there's like, I think there's like three. I think there's, I've been saying it all year. I'm going to stick to these guns. I think there's three teams. And one of them, I still think is Bama. Mm. I'll say it. Right. I, 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 won't, I won't say anything then. All right. Next game here uh, is Minnesota and Penn State. Uh I do not believe this is the Herbie special. I find this hard to believe that this is the Herbie special. It is 7.30 on ABC. Uh, it's 7.30 on ABC. It's the Herbie special. Well, not necessarily because they they, did they have the done Ohio 330s. State. Yep, they did the Ohio State-Michigan State game. That's true. Uh, so that would be Texas and uh, Oklahoma they, State. He, he did say Herbie is on it. Uh, yeah, we, we have both Zach and Austin saying that that is Herbie's game. All right. Well, it's interesting. Minnesota. No, nope, he isn't. He and, isn't. Austin is no. taking that audible. back. He said audible, audible. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, so I, I so it is, he, it is the Texas Oklahoma state game. Texas then? Oklahoma state. Yeah. All right. So Penn state is a four and a half point favorite here. I, I know they didn't look good last weekend against Michigan and rightfully so they, they got outperformed. they, Michigan was just a much better team than Penn State, but who who is Minnesota right now with all the injuries that they've had here? I just I know a lot a lot of you in the chat here, especially in the uh, last episode, you were telling me about that the boat sank, stop rowing, and this and that. Well, this this ship is sank for for the uh, for the Golden Gophers here. I. I don't think they stand a chance in this game. So I'll, I'll pick Penn State with the points here. Yeah, they, they lost Illinois last time they're on the field. They lost Illinois by 12. They lost to Purdue by 10. And don't get me wrong. I've been saying it all year. This is a very flawed Penn State team. It's a very flawed Penn State team. But Minnesota might probably might not have Tanner Morgan for this game and find the time to get my four hours sleep before work. See you, Matt. Um, my, I just, I, I think this is maybe one of the easiest picks on the board. Um, it's because it's just, it's Minnesota without Tanner Morgan. And, and I don't even, I don't even know. And I know he's been playing and I know he's put up some good numbers, where is Ibrahim even at this point? Because like, could, can he carry the ball 30 times in a game if they don't have Tanner Morgan to pick up the slack on the, on the offense? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that, that's the thing. If if I'm Penn state, learn from your mistake from last weekend, put, put eight in the box there and just stop and just stop Ibrahim. Just uh, Ibrahim. Ibrahim was hurt, Zach. He's back. I think he played um, the last two games for them. I think it's the last two games. Just the last game. Just the last game for them. Were they also off last week? No, they weren't. Okay. No, they played Illinois last week, and he carried the ball 15 times for 127 yards, eight and a half yards per carry that game. Yeah. When, he, when he's on the field, he's having great numbers. He's 6.7 yards per carry. He's a, he's having a pretty good year when he's on when he's on the field. Right, but considering his injury, 
how much yes. of a load can you give him? Austin says, maybe they should have given him the ball more, but what do I know? <laughs> you, you might not know like the real status of his, of his injury situation. And Correct. quite frankly, Yeah, exactly. Uh, so to that point, I almost have to wonder if you have to, as a as a coach, just be like almost like let let Ibrahim have some carries left for the NFL. Like do do yeah. the right thing and really just limit him. Mm -hmm. You're already one and two in conference. Yeah. All right. And Dinger here says he has Penn State to cover for his pick. All right, in our our last game here, Jared. Big 12 showdown, the other Big 12 showdown. Kent, Kent, why did, I almost said Kent State. Oof. <laughs> Kansas State. I think somebody mentioned Kent State in the chat here. Uh, <laughs> Kansas State and TCU. Battles of the purple. So we got orange on orange, orange on orange. And we got purple on purple, Jared. Austin demands an apology. Uh, from you, I did nothing wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you, Kyle. He says TCU is a three and a half point favorite. I don't know why I need to apologize to you, Austin. I do not know why. Do not know why. Uh, because you're trashing TCU. TCU. I'm not trash talking them. I'm not trash talking them. You know what? I'm, I'm picking them. I'm picking them to cover. So you can just you can you can just turn off you can you can just turn off your caps lock because <laughs> I just I just I just picked TCU okay okay TCU then he then he turns with, around with and say he's picking picks. Kansas no Kyle it was it was two weeks ago on uh, collegiate chaos when you wouldn't let me put them in the A tier that's what he's talking about okay. All right, uh, I'm taking TCU. I, I think that they're significantly better than Kansas State, and the three and a half points is not enough to scare me away. I'd take it like all the way up to, I'd, I'd hesitate at seven and a half. Six and a half mm -hmm. or below, uh, I'm going to take TCU. So yeah, TCU minus three and a half for me. And this is crazy. Like you look at TCU, I know that rankings can be misleading here, but as as they play the teams here, TCU beat then ranked 18th Oklahoma, then ranked 19th Kansas, then ranked 8th Oklahoma State. Now they're playing 17th Kansas State. That's what I'm saying. Although I, I will say this, and it's very early in the week. Currently, what CBS is telling me as I'm actively on their site, 100% of the picks across CBS have gone to TCU minus three and a half. So I'm probably wrong. Yeah, well, I'm 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 picking the four. I'm picking the horn frogs here. All right, and Dinger has TCU. He's picking TCU to cover. Uh, Austin says, I which is weird considering I picked KSU. It's it's like it's a rounding thing. I'm sure. Like if it's yeah. ninety nine point something. We already, we already did that thing, Austin. We already did that thing. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see some other games here, Jared. Uh, some other games, if you're interested here, uh, since we have a little bit of time. Uh, Cincinnati plays SMU. If you're interested in another noon, noon game here. Uh, if you want some red on red battle, because we talked a lot about uh, orange on orange, purple on purple. Watch Indiana and Rutgers play, Jared, on the Big Ten Network. You want to you watch that game? Kyle, are you currently shopping out your choose your chaos game? Is that what you're doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of doing that too here. So probably, probably a, probably if, if I were to pick one, well, I, I won't and, say. And I'm you wrong, are. Some, ga so some, some games here to choose from. Yeah, Cincinnati and SMU. That could be one. Ole Miss and LSU. We talked about them earlier. Um, where it's a, it's a pick them game. So that, that might be your pick there. Uh, Tulane is ranked, Jared, and they play Memphis. Yeah, if you want one uh, point, which I might do just because I haven't got one correct yet because I keep swinging for the fences. Um, all right. And you have 
we mentioned Penn State taking on Minnesota. And uh, that's it. I'm not. Austin well, says. In the, and, it, and then the other one was Tennessee and UT Martin. Yeah, not, not touching that one. Uh, I think the, the line on that game is currently there is none. For which one? Tennessee and UT Martin. Uh, uh, yeah, sneak- there, there is none. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this uh, Austin says sneaky pick. Give me Mississippi State over Bama. When was the last time Saban lost twice in a row? I mean, serious question. I, that, that's not me trying to make a point. That's a serious question. It's a good question. I, I'm not sure. When was the last time Bama lost two in a row? Zach says it's been like a decade. I'd believe you. If you told me it was a decade, I'd believe you. Last time Alabama lost two consecutive games was in 2013 when they lost the Iron Bowl, then a bowl game to Oklahoma. I don't even hasn't it. lost That's two a bowl game. consecutive. Saban hasn't lost two consecutive regular season games. Okay, since all right. In Ag- since his opening season. Yeah, and Bama in 2007. Was, yeah, 2007. Yeah. That that I believe. That I 100 percent believe. Yeah. Well, there's a second time for so, everything. So, you know, my even 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 though Jared, I picked Ole, Ole Miss to cover here, I'll I'll, I'll pick them for my uh, <laughs> for my uh, pick here. Well, it's a, it's a it's a swing. And yeah, I mean, like you have to. It's Vegas says it's a pick 'em game. Ole Miss is 7. That's 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 a lot of value. Um so I hate to do it because I can't catch up to you, but I also can't let you pull away from me with what is clearly the best value on the board. So I, I also pick that game, yep. which sucks. But again, it would suck worse to let you get those points and me not get them. Yeah. Ole All Miss right. wins will... the SEC West. I they're they're in the lead. They are <laughs> technically. Yeah, technically right, they're have... in the lead. All right, we have some questions here from uh, uh, Buckeye Zach. Nope, not Buckeye Zach. Um, yeah, it is Buckeye Zach. Sorry, you guys and your name changing get me all confused here. All right, Buckeye Zach here says, what would your top 25 look like right now? Uh, we'll, we'll cover that on uh, Tuesday's episode. <laughs> yeah, if we well, I mean, we did cover that on Tuesday's episode, and then we'll have mm-hmm. a brand. Well, it's not a full top twenty-five, but that's because I get bored after a while. I don't want to do it. Twenty-five is too many. Twenty-five is <laughs> too many. And I think I honestly yeah. just think it's more interesting to talk about them in tiers. Tiers, yeah. Than it I, is to I, actually I, rank them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A top ten, then Zach says. No, we we have our S tier and A tier, whatever's in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's almost ten, right? Hold on, let me let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. It's eight. I I didn't Aaron, remember how many. I didn't remember how many we left. Aaron, it's yeah. eight. Okay, I agree. Right. It's actually uh, more fun with tiers, he says. All right, uh, Zach has a co- has a few more questions here. Uh, Hold on, I'm I'm gonna do mine. It? I want to do mine real quick. Ohio State one, Georgia two. Tennessee three, Minnesota or Minnesota, Michigan four. Um, I would then go Clemson five, TCU six, UCLA seven, Alabama eight, and I'm bored. I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> you get a top eight. I think. I think. I think. I think the last ones there is probably maybe Ole Miss and I don't know Oregon maybe Oklahoma State. Either way. All right. Uh, more questions here, Jared, to answer. Why is Alex Grinch such a horrible defensive coach? Oh, and, li- and likewise, on the offensive side, why is Tim Beck so bad? Funny thing is, I loved I loved the Grinch hire when they when they first brought him to Ohio State. Yeah, I did, too. It just didn't work out. Well, and there are there are there are a lot of reasons why it didn't work out at Ohio State that. I'm not going to get into it's it's too much but the fact that he's also been a pretty big failure at oklahoma um is is upsetting for him um and then like usc's defense is also crap 
but he's only been there for a few games, so I'm not willing to like, you know, totally throw him yeah. under the bus for that. He's better at bad schools like Washington State. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, why is Tim Beck so bad? Uh, we we've talked about him. For See a the 2015 years. and 16 season. Yes. Uh, let's see here. I read that Hooker is the Heisman favorite now, but but does any? He's not, by the way. But, no, he, he's he's not. Um, I mean, just like using uh, Vegas as a system of measurement, he's not. Yeah, he, he said. He said. Do they realize that the he threw three picks against Alabama and and only passes off to one guy? I uh, I don't we'll think see. that's it's entirely a long... true, but I understand what you're saying. Uh, he's the fan vote leader by two percent over Stroud. Not that it matters. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, no, it's 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 also October twenty first. Like, I mean, you know when I mean, I, it, I mean I is his you can only guy. lose. You can only lose Heisman's in October. You can't win them in October. Yeah, I mean, Hyatt's definitely his favorite here. I mean, he has 33 catches, but I mean, it's when he does catch it, he finds his way into the end zone. Almost a third of his catches end up being a touchdown. But I mean, there's, I mean, he has other players he, he throws the ball to quite a bit, but I mean, I wouldn't say it's, he only has one player to throw to. It's just that his one guy. He, he really throws to is really good. Hooker is a very good, a very, very good college quarterback. He's also like, I think not maybe talked about enough. He's like 25, maybe 24. Like, you don't, you don't often get like, uh, 24 Austin things. You don't often get people with that much talent, that old playing college football anymore. Austin confirms it's 24. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a guy who has good arm talent, good athleticism, and those type of guys you don't normally see still in college football at the age of 24. It's a huge advantage. He turns 25 January 13th. When's the national title game? It's about there, right? National, yeah. you are you are already on it. National yeah. championship game is January 9th. But guys, Zach, he's only thrown one interception all year. I'm, I don't know where you got three interceptions but either way yeah um so he's a very good he's a very good quarterback he's a very good quarterback yes all right uh let's see here i suspect right, they question. will oracle all right last question here ranking the best defenses seen all year whom are they and where do they lie in your top five no hooker did not no he he's only thrown one interception all year I mean, I'm looking at it, and uh, yeah, it was against Alabama. That's the only one. All right, uh, uh, top defenses. What what are your top defenses that you've seen so far this year, Jared? It's it's really really hard to say because of measuring quality of opponent. Um, I've been impressed at times with Michigan's defense this year. Um, I do think they have some good pieces, um, but I, I also don't necessarily they, they've not played a good offense yet. Right. Like I, who who's the best offense? Uh, Maryland. Right. Back when uh, baby Tua was still healthy, they'll, they'll, they played a much better version of Maryland than will play, especially from the offensive standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. But like if the best offense you've played all year is Maryland, how am I supposed to create an accurate opinion on, you know, who you are as a defense? Like, I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like we're deep enough into the season to really say that uh, Georgia and Bama are really the only standouts on defense. Did you, did, were you watching football last week? My guy. 
I think the in in my mind, I Bama's think the best Bama's thing, secondary was turned into Swiss Swiss fucking cheese. Are you? No. So, so the best deep the best defenses that I've seen here, I think, I think um, no no particular order. I think Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State. Um, I mean, I know I I know they haven't really played. They haven't really played anyone except for Michigan, which they lost. But I mean, we talked about Iowa. Iowa's defense, I think, is the real deal, too. Yeah, Iowa's defense is very good. But as far as a fifth one, I mean, I from what I've seen, I really like NC State's defense. They're just on the field so much. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good, but it's not good enough to be on the field all the time because it's not that deep, which maybe should be a factor when, you know, if we're actually talking about the top five defenses. Maybe depth is a thing we should talk about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so that's, a you know, NC State might feel real good about their starting 11, but we've seen them, you know, fall apart later in games. All right, Jared, uh, that is all the questions we have here. Um, you got you got anything else before we wrap up today's episode? Uh, no, I think I'm, I think I'm good. I think, uh, I think we're good. Uh, Illinois is actually the number one defense in the country. Really? Mm-hmm. Based on what measurement, Austin? Yards per game. Okay. That is interesting. I know this, I know this is going the to be thing real. with Big Ten West teams is they play no offenses. I mean, that's totally fair. I mean, it's totally mm-hmm. fair. There's who's the who has the best offense right now in the Big Ten West? Um, um maybe Purdue, Purdue, Illinois? probably Illinois, maybe Illinois. Uh, Minnesota when they were healthy, but they're not anymore. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. The, there's not a standout. That's for sure. Like there's, there's no standout offense in, in, in the big 10 West right now. Um, Nebraska, surely that can't be true. For the sake of the Big was, Ten, I was for the sake of the Big Ten West, I need that not to be true. It is Purdue. It is Purdue. Okay. Purdue's ranked 36th best offense, and then and then followed by Minnesota at 38th. So Minnesota's close, but we also need to talk about, uh, see Zach, but we also need to talk about, you know, the fact that they don't have their quarterback anymore and you know, that's obviously and who a huge is, factor. And who is dead last in yards per game? Uh, for that the is, Big Ten. That is the team. Yeah. No, no, in general, who is last in offensive yards per game? In the Big Ten West? Overall, hundred. who is 131st? I don't know. Iowa. Yards per game? They, on offense, yes. I didn't think that's what my stat said, but th- they also might be just cal- you can calculate those things in different ways. So whatever, we we can move forward. Um, move forward into the end of the show. Um, the just want to remind everyone that we are on YouTube. Some of you might be watching and or listening to us on YouTube. There's two different places you can find us on YouTube. Uh, One of those places is our channel. Uh, You can find us. uh, You can type uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com or you can just search Sloopcast uh, in in your YouTube app, however you feel like doing it. Uh, You can also find us on the YouTube channel for Buckeye Huddle. Uh, The Buckeye Huddle YouTube page. We uh, joined the Buckeye Huddle crew recently so you can find us over on buckeye huddle um you can find us uh in non-video format uh on any any just pick pick a youtube app or a youtube app a podcast app pick a pick a podcast app you'll find us there as well just search sloopcast um 
Spotify? Yeah, we're on Spotify. In fact, uh, Spotify.thesloopcast.com. iTunes, they call it, it's just called Apple now. So, uh, not Omegle. Yeah, iTunes isn't the thing anymore. It's just it's just Apple Podcast. Uh, but So, no, yeah. we aren't on iTunes. But, yes, we're on Apple Podcast. No, we're not on iTunes. We've been over this one already, Austin. Do they got you on the good drugs right now? Only football? Nope, we're not on... We're not on. What about iTunes? Yes, they do. Okay. He, Austin's on the good drugs. Austin's on the good drugs. All right. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Kind of kind of like on on Thursday's episode. It's been a pretty cool. <laughs> Which has only been, been like a, an hour ago for us. No. Uh it's been it's been pretty quiet week, which I mean, it's good. That means people are staying out of trouble. And people, there's no really injuries to report as well. Uh, yeah. So yeah. they're not being excited, a game last for, week. Excited for this weekend. Excited to get to watch college football, get to watch the Buckeyes again here. Yeah. Should be a good weekend. I think as last I checked anyway, the Ohio State game, the noon window was our uh, looking forward to the SSS. Yeah, I think that's tell them about it. I was I was Austin. Uh, well, I think last I checked the voting, our, our uh, Sloopcast social screen game, which is when we all gather in the Discord server and, and watch it together. Um, last I checked, it was going to be the Ohio State game. It was going to be the noon game, uh, but it, it also looked like a pretty tight vote. So we'll see. Um, uh, it's tied from early window and late window. Oh, OK. So either a vote was added or removed at some point. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you want to join us in the Discord server and if you want to join us in the social screen, um, anyone can join the social screen by joining our Discord server. Anyone. It's it's totally free. You can join our Discord server, uh, discord.thesloopcast.com. And then there's a uh, room called the social the Sloopcast social screen room. And in there you can watch and listen as we watch and talk about the games as we watch them. Um, now, if you're a Patreon supporter, then you actually have voice privileges in that room and you can talk with and to us as we talk about the game. Uh, and that that's $3 a month. Uh, you can pay for that all up front uh, for it's like 32 something. I think if you pay for the entire year up front, it gives you a little bit of a discount to do the year up front. Um, it's so fun guys. I promise Austin says we make fun of you. Yeah. They're brutal on me. They're real brutal. Hurts my confidence sometimes. God, I'm, I'm playing um, the, but yeah, so it's a lot of fun. And like I said, you can join it and join with us for free, totally free. The only thing that you have to pay for in that instance is the ability to have your microphone on. That's it. So um, that's it. I think that's all of the plugs I feel like doing. Kyle already said he's got nothing in the join us for free. See if you like it. Then pay three dollars a month. Easy. Yeah, you should totally try before you buy. You can access most of the server, most of the server for free. You have very similar access rights to the Patreon supporters. There are some key differences, of course, trying to make a little bit of money here, but very, very similar. There's just a couple rooms you can't see and stuff like voice privilege in the social screen room. Uh, and like I said, you for that three dollars, by the way, it's not just discord stuff. You get early access to episodes. They get posted to the Patreon before they get posted to the podcast feed. Unlike our podcast feed, you get your own feed that's separate from the public podcast feed. The private doesn't get those uh, commercials in it. Those commercials that are in in our regular podcast feed that, that come from Spreaker those are not in the Patreon feed. So if you want to get rid of those ads for $3 a month for $32 a year, you can get rid of those ads. Um, 
uh, and you get access to SCO. Yes. We also do a weekly show. Uh, we call it Sleep Cats Only, and it's exclusively posted to the Patreon. And it's a uh, it's a bit of a shit show, if I'm being honest with you. Um, that's a joke you would understand if you ever listened to that episode. That that's an inside reference, and if you want to be on the inside part of that reference, it's only cost you three dollars a month. You get so much. All right. Um. I, I just talked for such a long time, and I know I already said this, but do you have anything else? I just felt like it'd be rude to cancel it all of a sudden. Oh, we're good. You, uh, you we're keep good. doing you. <laughs> there was a little passive aggressive in there. Oh, you're good. You're good, Jared. God, you're so Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> that That passive aggressive Midwest is deep in you. Well, that's good. That's good. Because <laughs> so, some people think that uh, that so, that I've changed. Well, you have. I've changed. Uh, you, you all, you, you've, you've kept, you've kept the worst parts of Ohio. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. End what, the episode. What else end Yes, end the episode, end the episode. Uh, tonight's ending music, uh, just like on uh, yesterday's show, is the Cloud Nothings. Um, they are a Cleveland-based band. They're just like an alt-rock band. They're a lot of fun. And with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer. So listen, ooh, nope, lost that one. Drink local beer, listen to local music, and, it's, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Cloud Nothings. <laughs>